So, uh, yeah, guys, if you are turning in your Bibles, please turn to Matthew 4, 4. Like I said before, we are going to be bouncing around a bit, so uh, just write that down, or at least kind of follow along with your, with your um, email. But uh, just to start it off and just talking about tonight, um, I kind of want to start off a little bit interactive. Okay. I want you guys to share, it doesn't have to be a long good news sharing, I want you to share with five words or less, what did you learn from your quiet time this morning, from what you read? Ooh. From five words or less, what did you learn with your quiet time this morning? Ha! God still loves me. God still oh. loves me. Okay, okay. Pass? God's plans are great. <laughs> Amen. Okay, God's plans are great. Well, who else learned something? Uh, uh, you're counting? Yeah. I'm yeah. Counting. <laughs> oh Remember the Lord always. Remember the Lord always. Millie Mills? Can it be less than five? Yes, five or less. Oh, sorry. God cares. God cares. Okay. Mac? Build your foundation on a rock. No. Mm. no. <laughs> Build on a rock. There we go. On a rock. <laughs> on rock. I got you, bro. <laughs> be strong and take heart. Okay, Ooh. JT. Sorry. <laughs> Forgive yourself to be effective. Ooh. Ooh. That's a good one. Uh, there's time for every emotion. Ooh. Mm -hmm. See, there's a reason I wanted to record all this. I'm going to make lessons out of these things. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Forgive yourself to be effective. That's wow, that is awesome. <laughs> See, we're, we're always learning, right? Each and every single day in Christianity, we're always learning. We're learning in our Bibles because we understand that Christianity is not a finished kind of religion. Mm -hmm. Come on. Meaning you never get to the point. You never get to the end. You never actually hit kind of the conclusion. Mm -hmm. There's always somewhere where we're going. There's always something that we're building on. There's always something that we're growing Towards. Come on, Sean. You know, um, there is no, like the, the Mormons, there is no two year mission. Mm. There is no graduation. There is no rite of passage and you're done, you're a man, it's over. Instead, there's this continual road of trial and error that we express, or that, that, that we express in our lives. Um, a Christian life is kind of like that of a shark's life. Mm. Meaning, if you ever heard, there are some kind of sharks that they must swim in order to survive. Mm. That if some species of sharks don't keep swimming, they die. Wow. They don't actually get the, the, uh, the water in their gills, and so they don't get receive oxygen. And so if they stop swimming, they die. Wow. And that's actually the same thing with Christianity. If we mm. stop moving, if we stop growing, we cannot survive. That's mm. right. Yeah. See, God, in our Christian life, He actually takes this responsibility, or this requirement of us, you know, like a personal responsibility to God. He really looks at this and puts us in situations where if we're not moving, we're not going to survive that situation. Mm. Has God ever put you in a situation where you know automatically you're going to need to grow to survive it? Yeah. Yeah. God takes that as His responsibility. He knows that we need to grow, we need to keep moving, so He puts us into that. Come on, Sean. And one of the best ways, though, to really understand that as Christians we need to continually grow, one of the best ways to ensure that we continuously grow is going into our daily Bible studies. Mm. Come on. See, the Bible, it talks about that it does so many different things in our lives. That it's going to cut out the sins in our lives in Hebrews 4.12. It's going to show us what's in our hearts as the mirror to our life in James 1.23-25. Um, it's going to allow us to take the stand against Satan and his schemes, wielding the sword of the Spirit, Ephesians 6.18. Mm. It goes on, it keeps us unified keeps us hum humble, keeps us dependent on God. Yeah. And the Bible in one sense or another is a, one of the key factors of us staying faithful. Come on. In Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Mm. You know, it says on every single word yeah. from the mouth of God. That is what we should survive on. Mm. This is our nourishment for our soul. Mm. I don't know about you, but um, I love junk food. I love junk food. Actually, the, one of the real main reasons I miss America that is so that I can go back and have my junk food. Uh, whenever I go back, you know, we usually go back for like a church conference or visit family a little bit. The very first like four or five days, I'm all in it. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner at Macca's, 
at Denny's, uh, at Wiener Sissel. Not a lot of people are fans, but I love the corn dogs. Like, I, I love all those things. Like, you know, the real Mexican food? Yeah. I love it. But what usually happens is I go back for a good four or five days. I have the junk food and everything. And then after a while, I'm just like, Please hand me a salad. <laughs> like, I can't. I can't take any more of this. I, I just. My stomach feels bad. I, I just feel like I've just gained a couple of kilos. Like I feel like I'm. I'm like slowly walking places now. Like it just. It just feels wrong. You see. And in one sense or another, I could survive off junk food. But I just won't be very healthy, right? Right. In the same way, we can survive off having junk food kind of quiet times. Where we're not really learning much, we read, we did something, but your spiritual health is not going to go that well. Right. Yeah. Have you ever felt that? You had quiet times, but you wake up this day and you're like, I need a great one. Yeah. Mm. Those other ones, I just don't feel nourished. I feel like I don't have enough energy in my spirit to actually right. get me to the next day. Come on, Sean. And so today we're simply going to be talking about this, is how to have nourishing quiet times in the Bible. Come on. Um, we're approaching a time in the year where, yes, we are going to rest. Yes, we're going to have great times with our family, going on holidays. We're not going to be working, all these things. But we cannot forget to get nourishment from the scriptures. Mm. It doesn't mean that we're just going to wake up late and not still get our, our spiritual nourishment just because we have a lot of food over Christmas. Yeah. It's, it's, we, we still have to have amazing and awesome quiet yeah. times in the scripture. Come on, yeah. Sean. So my lesson for tonight is just preparing us for the, these holidays. Is My lesson is titled, Listening to God. Mm. A lesson on Bible studies. Point number one is we have to work at your Bible study. Come on. Come on. So if you are turning in your scriptures, you can turn to Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Come on, uh, But we remember this scripture, right? Where it talks about this newly formed church in the book of Acts. And we, we understand what they were doing here in the scriptures. It says that they weren't just listening to the apostles. But it talks about this sense of devotion. Let's read this again. In Acts 2, verse 42, it says, They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, and to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Mm. And one of the great questions we can ask ourselves, especially when we talk about they devoted themselves to the apostles' teachings, well, the apostles today, how do we really apply that? We don't have any apostles anymore, but we do have the apostles' teachings in the Bible. Well, how do we uh, 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 do that? Is we, we, we get into the Bible, right? That's how we get to the apostles' teachings. But one of the great questions we can ask ourselves is, what's the difference between just reading the Bible and being devoted to the Scriptures? Right. Come on, Sean. There's, there's a big difference hmm. between, oh, I just, I just read the Bible, or I'm devoted to the Scriptures. Hmm. It's kind of like the difference if you ever have a board game and you read the instructions... There's a difference between just reading the instructions and being devoted to what the rules say. Uh, yeah. I, to be honest, am not very much devoted to those rules sometimes when it comes to games. Uh, yeah. You know, if you ever lived, or if you ever come to my house and we play Uno, very, very different rules. I am not dedicated or devoted to those rules right there. Uh, every week. Every week. Um, and it depends on what helps me win more, to be honest. But, you know, it's the same thing. It's, you're reading the instructions from life. You can do that. That's awesome. That's the Bible. Mm. Are you devoted to those rules? Come on. Very, very different. Yeah. You'll know, actually later highlights that throughout the scripture in verse uh, 47, that they actually continued to grow. God allowed them, this church, to be added to daily. Well, we get here that in the beginning, verse 42 and 47 are, are extremely connected, that the church grew because they were growing. Meaning... The church was growing numerically because they were growing in their character. Right. They were growing in their heart. They were growing in their devotion. That the more that they were growing, the more God was going to allow them to grow as a church. Come on, Sean. But we all understand when we talk about the word growth, that it's not always easy. Right. Mm -hmm. To be called to grow or to do something stronger or better is not always easy, even when God's on your side. But we have to remember, God's on your side more like a coach than like a referee who's trying to throw the game for you. Right. There's a big difference. God's on your side, yes, but he's a coach who's trying to encourage you to do more and grow. Of course. He's not just going to get and make the game easy for you. Right. He's not going to be like, oh, I'll change the rules for you, sorry. Okay, you can, you can still go. Mm. 
Right? It's not that way. It's God's the coach trying to get you better at the game. Come on, John. See, he is behind, behind you, but we still have a lot of work to do. And in the same way, it's no different with our Bible study and our devotion to our scriptures. Mm -hmm. That God's going to give us these scriptures and instructions, but we still have a lot of work to do to apply them in our life. Yeah. We have to remember and think about this scripture. Peter, uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15 through 16. It says, bear in, mind, bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which ignorant and unstable people distort, wow. as they do other scriptures to their own destruction. Oh, we read this scripture and start to understand, hey, read, just accepting the scriptures is one thing, but to actually use them in a productive way is going to take some work. Come on. See, it, it, it almost warns us here in these scriptures that it is possible to distort the scriptures to your own destruction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even listen to those that do the same thing. Hmm. It actually talks about there are, there are two types of people, at least in these scriptures, that are mentioned that do so, that, that use the scriptures to their own destruction. It says the first one is ignorant people. I think about like that root word, and this is something I actually I only learned about a couple weeks ago from taking uh, assistance. Is ignorant means like that root word to ignore, right? You think about there are some people. These are the type of people that will ignore other scriptures, mm. meaning they'll read one and they'll just take that. I'll have faith alone. Only do that, and their life gets destroyed because they're only taking one scripture in their life and ignoring others. Come on, Sean. Yeah. Where the Bible says, "Hey, faith alone." Without deeds, that's dead faith. Right. Yeah. Right. They're ignoring that scripture to their own destruction. Yeah. Wow. See, it, it, Christianity is a game that survives only when you use all the rules. Come on. Mm -hmm. The game doesn't make sense once you start taking out rules and taking out scriptures. You can't ignore them. The second type of person, it says an unstable person. These people are those that jump from one scripture to another based off of their feelings. Mm -hmm. They're unstable. One day they believe in this, another day they believe in that because a, one preacher said something that they touched their hearts or whatever and now they change their, their doctrine mm, yeah. just because someone said something that was really cool or up on YouTube. It's like th these unstable people lead to their own destruction. Mm. See, it talks about actually the scriptures are not all, not all scriptures are hard to understand, right? It says there are some things that are hard to understand, mm. but the easiest way to understand them or the easiest way to actually get past a difficulty is one is by taking the scriptures as a whole don't just be ignorant and ignoring other scriptures and letting that be your foundation rather than your feelings or whatever that pastor must have told you even myself yeah letting the scriptures be the foundation mm -hmm. so we read here that we're already starting to understand this reading the bible is going to take some work right, right? you don't just read and automatically understand everything you gotta okay you gotta put all the scriptures together yeah. you gotta not just be based off your feelings and what you feel inspired by you gotta see what the scriptures say it takes a tremendous responsibility on us to actually personally stick to the truth. Yeah. See, there are some passages that are going to be difficult to understand, but it's not going to be impossible. Um, that it is possible to understand these scriptures so that there's no excuse that we can't just uh, not do them. It actually says here in uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verse 13, it says, For we did not write to you anything you cannot read or understand. Yeah. Yeah. That we all have the ability to understand the scriptures. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is not limited to the intellectuals or the scholars of our day. Yeah. That, oh, they get to understand the scriptures. The pastors get to understand right. the scriptures. Yeah. The, the Bible teachers. I'm going to leave that with them and I'll, I'll get them to teach me because they must know more. Right. You know what I'm saying? That we all have responsibility to actually understand the scriptures and, and take that personally in our responsibility. Yeah. Don't just get lazy and be lazy and be like, well, I don't understand these scriptures. Oh, what do you think? No, do some study for yourself. Come yeah. on, Sean. Actually, get some deep convictions in the Bible. Come on. You study out the scriptures. You, you find it out. You put that in your personal yeah. work for God. Yeah. 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 See, the next part is, yes, we have to get to it. Understanding the scriptures is one thing. But we all know that the truth does not fulfill its purpose until it's used. Right. Mm -hmm. Just because you know something's true doesn't mean it actually has done anything for the world until you've used that truth. Mm -hmm. Come on. So even in the Bible, right? One thing is, yes, we're going to have to work hard to understand the scriptures. Okay, that's going to take a bit of time. 
But we're also going to have to work hard on how to use the scriptures. Yeah. In 2 Timothy 2, verse 15, it says, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. Mm -hmm. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. A workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. There are so many people out there that claim to be Christian and are almost ashamed when they don't know their scriptures. Mm -hmm. I know that was me when I first started studying the Bible, actually. Uh, my brother was trying to convince me to study the Bible for like months. And uh, I just didn't want to do it because my brother was asking, uh, pretty much. <laughs> uh, it wasn't until one of his friends asked me to study the Bible, I was like, yes. And I, it took me like five seconds to say yes, so oh. sorry, Eric. But um, I went there along just kind of like, man, uh, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Um, I, I've probably never read the Bible, to be honest, but I've been going to church with my life, and I was just like, I'm going to go teach them something. That was literally in my heart. But I got there, and they're like, okay, cool. Um, here's a Bible. Can you turn to Psalms? You know what you do? You go to the front two pages. And you go, uh, I was like, dang it, I don't know anything. Let me just teach me, whatever. I don't even know where Psalms is at. And uh, it, for me, like in my Christian life, I was ashamed. I was like, man, I actually don't know what the Bible teaches. Mm. It's saying that we have to do this, but also not only do we have to know what it teaches, but we have to handle it correctly. Yeah. You know, the Bible is, is a very dangerous weapon. There are still countries in this world where you can get off the plane with like a gun, but you can't get off the plane with a Bible. Mm -hmm. The Bible That's is true. very dangerous. Mm -hmm. and they understand that. The government understands these things. But we have to understand that here in our life as well. That the Bible, remember, compares itself to a sword. You can't just be going willy-nilly just swinging that thing around. Mm -hmm. you got to know how to use yeah, the sword. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You must be wise in how you use the sword. And there's wise in two different areas. You have to be wise in how you use it to others and how you use it on yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Struggling to forgive somebody. Do you have a memory scripture for that? Do you have a memory scripture when someone's struggling with impurity in their life? Do you have a memory scripture when someone doesn't wake up, want to wake up early and they want to be lazy? Uh -oh. Do you actually use the Bible or just use the things that you know that are in the Bible? You're paraphrasing. Wow. Actually memorize scriptures. In the same way, do you have go-to scriptures for your own heart? Mm -hmm. yeah. When you don't feel like sh uh, sharing your faith, when you feel, when you feel like don't, uh, not giving to the fellowship. Mm -hmm. When you feel like not showing up to church, we all have that. Do you have go-to scriptures to actually use it on yourself? Come on, Sean. See, developing a, a competence in studying the Bible with others as well as yourself is part of using yeah. the Bible. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have to become well-equipped workmen. Mm -hmm. In 2 Timothy 3, this is the next chapter, verse 17, it says, So that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for good work. Right? We use the Bible so we can be equipped for every good work. In 1 Peter 3, 15, it says, But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord, always prepared to give an answer to everyone wow. who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But do this with gentleness and respect. See, we have to be able to equip ourselves, guys, not only to do the work, of the Lord, but also to answer every single question about the faith we have. Come on. You know, if someone's asking you, hey, you're talking, you're inviting me to church, you're inviting me to join this Christian life, why? Mm -hmm. Do you have a scripture to show them? Right. Come on, Do you actually turn to the scriptures rather than your own experience? See, there are sometimes people try to wrongly evangelize. People are like, well, why are you a Christian? Sometimes what people will say, it works for me. Buddhism works for people. Uh, Islam works for people. Yeah. That doesn't make it true. Right. Mm -hmm. Your own testimony can have power in some people's lives, but that's not what makes it true. Come on, right. Sean. you got to go back to the truth to convince people. Yeah. Right? Your own testimony, yes, that's good, that's awesome, <clears throat> but you have to go back to the scriptures because a Buddhist can say that. Well, Buddhism works for my family. Mm. It makes me have peace. That doesn't mean it's true, right? Yeah. In the same yeah. way, we can't allow that to be our definition of why we follow Christianity Come on, Sean, as well. Because what if next year Buddhism's true for you, mm -hmm. and that that makes you happy? Does that make it true? No. No, no, no. You you have to go back to the truth. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. So we see here. Okay, well, we got to know the scriptures. It's going to take some work. 
We've got to apply the scriptures. It's going to take some work. But application should lead to what? To change. Yeah. First John, uh, sorry, James chapter 1, 22 through 25. We know these scriptures. It says, Do not merely listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not, uh, excuse me, but does not do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. Yeah. But a man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. Yeah. You know, reading the Bible and... and Looking at it becomes useless if it's not having any application in our lives. Mm. That when we actually pull out the Bible and apply it to ourselves, we should be expecting others to change as well as ourselves. Mm -hmm. Come on, Sean. It says here, we know that the Bible, again, describes itself as a mirror. It describes itself as a sword. But just because it is that and there's, there's a sword in your life, you actually still have to use it, right? Mm -hmm. have, have you ever had a quiet time or read in the Bible Something that later on that day someone challenged you on? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right? You read it in the morning. God tried to give you a little bit of a snippet of what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. And that somebody else had to use the scripture on you. Oh, wow. Yeesh. See, there's, there's a yeah. difference here. Is that you had the weapon. You had the scalpel. You could have cut the sin out yourself. But you didn't do it. Right. You had it in your hand. You knew where it was. But somebody else had to grab the blade from you and go like that. <laughs> right? That, that, that's the difference is we have to actually use the scripture on ourselves. Mm. See, the difference is that you're using it on yourself. Uh, excuse me. The difference is that um, there's a big difference, excuse me, from being taught something and have learned it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's, there's a huge difference. That you could be taught something, right? You can actually be taught, hey, this is what this means. You have a, a university course. You're taught the requirements. You're taught the curriculum. But you fail the course. You didn't actually learn it. Yeah. And there's a big difference. See, we have to ask ourselves, what am I learning? Right. Yeah. Come on. Yes, God taught you something this morning. But did you learn your lesson? Mm. And we wonder why God has to keep putting that same lesson in our lives. Right? It's just like university. You fail the lesson. You're going to have to retake the course. Yeah. Mm. You, but hopefully you learned a little bit more. Mm. But it's the same thing. It's like, are you guys asking yourselves, what is God teaching me right now? Mm -hmm. Are you asking yourselves those difficult questions? This quiet time, what I read today, what, what is God trying to put on my heart? Yeah. Mm. What is God actually teaching me? Well, yes, I learned that God is caring. That's cool. Okay, how can I, um, how can I get connected to God caring? Where is an area in my life that I feel like God doesn't care about? Mm. How can I go deeper of what I've learned? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. God tells us to forgive us. What's one thing I haven't forgiven myself about today? Mm. I need to pray about this today. See, there's a big difference between God teaching you something and you learning the lesson. Yeah. Come on, Sean. So my very first thing is just thinking about yourselves and, and is coming to the end of the year. I really want you guys to think about this and reflect on it in your next couple of quiet times is, what did God teach you this year? Mm. Yeah. And what have you still not learned that God is still trying to teach you? I want you every single day uh, while you read the Bible this week is ask yourself those questions. Yeah. What is God teaching me and what haven't I learned yet? Come on, Sean. Between here and the end of the year, just write down one thing that you think God is going to teach you. So this is kind of the, the hard work we have to do. We have to know the Bible, understand it. We have to know how to use it. And then we have to change from it and have that expectation. Yeah. The next couple of points, to be honest, aren't going to be as in-depth. They're just going to be, uh, my point number two is pretty much practical suggestions on how to have great, nourishing, quiet times. Mm. Uh, the first one is, even though it's going to be holidays, um, that you still need to set a time for your Bible study every single day. Yeah. Uh, even though you're not going to have work and you don't have to wake up so early or um, you're going to be with your family and that's going to be a little bit different and everything, um, I still want you to set up a, a, a time that you are dedicating to read your Bible. Mm. Why is because we've all been there where, oh, uh, I woke up at, you know, 11 o'clock. I'll do it later. I have nothing to do today. I'll do it later. You know, your family starts coming. Oh, I'll do it later. And by the end of the night, you don't even do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so still have that time in, in your day. My suggestion is, let's say you normally wake up at 6 a.m. to read. I would say, even though you don't have to, still wake up at 6 a.m., read your Bible, then go back to sleep. Come on, Doesn't matter how long you go to sleep for, but still so that you can wake up.